Teachers of Reddit, who was, without question, the worst student you have had to deal with. I teach adults. She was a severe and chronic know-it-all. She would commentate non-stop through all of my lectures and demos. Okay, I see. Well I knew that. I knew that too. I see. Is that how you're going to do that? Are you sure? I see. Okay. Wouldn't it be better this way? Fine. Okay. I see. Oh yes. I knew that. I knew that too. And on and on. I finally snapped and told her she was being rude to me. She emailed me the next day telling me that I owed her an apology. Dante. He was in my 10th grade English class. He was awful. He would call me over to ask questions. Fart. And then laugh. He showed up maybe once a week or two. Then complained that he was failing the class. When he was there. We got very little done because he was such a distraction. But the moment that sealed the deal for me was a parent conference. All Dante's teachers were there. His mom was there. We went around and every teacher repeated the same basic tale. Dante rarely shows up. Is a terrible distraction. Is disrespectful. Etc. After the teachers explained the problem. Dante's mother turned to the guidance counselor and said I don't understand why all these teachers are lying on my son. Her two older sons were both in jail. I suspect Dante has joined them by now. Billy, a 6 feet 5 inches male student who has a history for punching his teachers. He was sent to my school after beating up the wrestling coach. He has a way of getting really upset and yelling and cursing. One day he's out of his seat. I ask him to sit down. He walks over to the board and starts drawing. I walk up to him and say sit down now. His response with you don't tell me what to do. I run this crap. And he's looming over me. I'm 5 feet 8. In front of the entire class. So I had to make him leave. I was lucky he decided to leave. But if he decided to go crazy there would have been no stopping him. One of my favorite students ever. He used to call me Mama C. He got really into playing lawyer for a mock trial based on the crucible. He shouted from a parade float that misses. C. Was the best English teacher ever. And he also beat his uncle to death. Broke my heart. His cousin. The uncle's son. Was also in my first period at the time. I still have a Christmas card I never mailed to him in jail. He should be out by now. I think this is one of the saddest stories. It's different when a kid is bad all the time, but he was clearly trying at school and could have had a bright future. He obviously can't pursue a career in law anymore, but you should definitely look him up and encourage going to a community college or something. A little bit of faith in him could go a long way. University student actively stalked me with the intent of putting me in a position where she could accuse me of racism. I had to carry around an audio recorder, pre-smartphone, pretty much 24-7 for an entire semester. My student A was easily one of my most challenging students. Out of my many stories this one comes to mind. I overheard A ask other students while they were eating breakfast. Do you want to kill kids with me this was right after the Sandy Hook incident. So I was really uneasy. One of my students approached me minutes afterwards and said that A told him he had a gun in his backpack. I told my paraprofessional not to allow anyone to leave the room. A saw me starting to leave and he starts screaming on the top of his lungs. No, what the frick are you doing? Where are you going? I left as quickly as possible to tell the principal. Listen to this crap. She was too busy. She checked his book bag about two hours later. There wasn't anything I'm the bag. But the two hours of waiting was pure agony. When anyone would go by the door, he would start throwing a tantrum. Then, that same day, he was telling me he moved the gun to his sister's backpack. Then he started to run and I chased after him. Overall he never had a gun, but it was a very stressful day. His consequence, nothing. I have plenty of more crazy bus stories with him with no consequences, outside of the classroom consequence. Comma I left as quickly as possible to tell the principal. Listen to this crap. She was too busy. I too am a teacher. Report your crappy principal to the district HR. That should be an automatic firing. Lazy butt piece of crap. K was 14. At least 6 feet 5. Bipolar with ADHD. His mother refused to medicate him. She had also just given birth to twins and his father was out of the picture. So he basically had no parental supervision. 
Furthermore, he lived in Harlem and several gangs were trying to recruit him, which understandably made him even more on edge. Oh, and this was my first year of teaching, so I was incredibly unprepared to handle how this underlying emotional stuff transferred into the classroom. Underneath all of the crap he was dealing with, he was a pretty sweet kid, but ultimately, his frequent violent outbursts were a safety concern for himself and everyone at the school. He ended up having to transfer to a District 75 school. You could make this into a movie. I'm not a teacher, but when I was in 6th grade, a butthole kid in my math class drove my teacher to quit her job. This kid would always go to the bathroom for like 30 minutes and end up skipping half the class. So one day she wouldn't let him go and he just peed in his pants right in the middle of class. The teacher ended up getting in trouble for not letting him go to the bathroom. Also, he would throw crackers and other food at her in the middle of class. One day a baby carrot hit her straight in the forehead and she burst into tears and never came back to school again. In my friend's 7th grade home ec class a kid put himself in the oven and his friends turned it on. The teacher flipped and quit. The kids got in a little trouble. No one got hurt though. Currently, this student in 5th grade, she's constantly seeking the attention of older boys in the school, like middle and high school boys, and then complains to her mom that they tried to touch her inappropriately. The mom is always coming to complain and threaten that she would report it to the police. Of course this never happens, because it's not true. Said boys are not interested, and have been warned to keep away and not touch. She's always moody and grouchy, and spends most of the time in class pouting about trivial stuff. Takes three times as long to complete anything at all. Never turns in her homework. When I follow up the mom defends her with some stupid excuse and I have to let it go. He grades keep sliding but the mother blames me. Even other kids in class have learned to avoid her like the plague. Without being told to do so. No friends whatsoever. Then two weeks ago she asks to go to the bathroom comes back to class crying her eyes out and alleges that a stranger touched her inappropriately as she came out of the bathroom, a man she had never seen before. So, she's alleging that a guy walked off the neighborhood, long driveway into school, into school, went past the front office unseen, front office is always manned, always busy, passed a couple hallways and somehow managed to find her coming out of the bathroom and touched her. The cameras reveal her coming in and out of the bathroom and back to class with no incidents, but because she said it we had to lock down the school and call the cops and report it. We had to call each parent to inform them of the alleged incident. Reporters and TV cameras showed up so we were in the news. The entire day wasted. Now the school is forced to upgrade security, which costs. Means the district has to cut the budget to accommodate the upgrade. Everyone knows nothing really happened. I am a guy and I am only hoping that the school year ends and she moves on before she alleges that I did something to her. I had a student kill a guy by smashing a terracotta flower pot on his head. He got 21 years for murder, was 18 at the time, will be out when he's 40. Nice work, son. MH13, the psycho. I filled in for a teacher who was supervising finals for the 9th graders. It was a language class for students who weren't qualified to choose a third language. French, Spanish or German, so they got to focus on their English studies instead. At least that was the point. I had 6 students in the classroom. Now at this school they have certain rules. No phones in the classroom, if they had their phone with them they were required to turn it into the teacher to be put in a locked cupboard until the end of class. Furthermore it's a nut free school since there are a couple of students with severe nut allergies. Now I'd been warned about this 7th grade class by many of the teachers. I'd never had this class before. Apparently a couple of them were little shitheads. But hey, how bad could they possibly be? So one student, A, had brought his phone into the classroom which he handed in immediately. One of my favorite students BTW, to be locked in the cupboard. M brought a Snickers and a bag of M&Ms to class. I calmly explained the rules to him about this being a nut free school and asked him to hand the contraband over, telling him that he could come pick them up at the end of the day. Very reluctantly he handed the stuff over to me and I then locked it in the cupboard with the phone. M and another student were being absolute shoots the entire lesson. When the lesson was over I go to the cupboard to retrieve A's phone. As I start to unlock the padlock M tackles me. Starts hitting me and screaming at me. I want my freaking candy. You freaking W. 
I will freaking kill you. I want my candy now. Mild paraphrasing. Just so you know. Now this kid is about 4 feet 6 and weighs about 90 pounds. I threw him off me and restrained him and carried him out of the classroom. He was kicking and screaming the entire time and by now attracting quite a crowd. I put him down outside in the hallway. Told him to calm down and that he'd get his stuff back at the end of the day. Turned and started walking back to the classroom when he started punching me in the back and neck. Kicking me in the legs. I turned around and told him stop right now. You're just embarrassing yourself. None of the students think you're cool for hitting me. Just go away he stopped hitting and kicking me and noticed the other students looking at him with disgust. I'm a popular teacher. And he just walked away. I went back into the room and gave A's phone to him. He told me I hate that kid. He's like this all the time. I want to switch class. He then gave me a hug before going to his next class. I filed a report to the principal. Told his head teacher what had happened and filed a report to the superintendent. The school filed a police report for assault. Social services got involved and the kid was removed from class forever. I was covered in bruises for weeks. I taught alternative ed for 2 years before I had enough. There are quite a few names my future kids will not have because they are forever ruined. The worst, by a freaking mile, was Kyle. Kyle hated school, was a 17 year old 8th grader, and had 2 kids. Despite his awful treatment of me, I still held a book and clothes drive for his daughters, which completely shocked him. I should have given up. He would come into class every day exclaiming I have a stiffy and make comments about how badly I needed to get fricked if he was having a good day, if he was having a bad day, I've tried to forget most of it. The worst was the day he refused to sit in his desk. He just wanted to lay on the floor and sleep. Because I asked him to get up 3 times and then began writing him up. I clearly deserved the tirade that followed. You freaking BC. You know your husband is cheating on you cause you're such an ugly bee. It went on for over 5 minutes before admin finally showed up. Kyle's a great name. And I have had 3 wonderful Kyle since then. But, nope. He is a blemish on the great Kyle name. Can't say that I was that surprised though, when you mentioned that he was a 17 year old 8th grader. The first grader that tried to stab me in the stomach with the scissors he grabbed off my desk. I was 7 months pregnant. I restrained him until help arrived and they put a reprimand in my file. Evidently I should have let him stab me instead of protecting myself. Is there a way to try to get that off your file because that's a bull's reprimand? Classmate of worst student ever here. This girl left school as soon as she turned 16. So you can imagine how many fricks she gave. In our history class she would blatantly text, listen to loud music, etc. Our school doesn't have a detention system, so she was never at risk for anything. Our teacher was also slightly passive aggressive, so rather than confronting her, he ignored her. She would argue against any sort of in-class work he would assign just because she didn't care didn't mean her parents didn't. And he'd have to dedicate half of our class time to explaining why the work was important while the rest of the class sat quietly and listened to her complaints. So the end of the year rolls around, and he's happy he'll never have to see her again. He starts smiling at the end of each class, bigger each day, and we all realize that he's just happy to finally be rid of her. Then the final exam comes along. She absolutely bombs it. We were barely required to write 4 pages about history, and she bombed it. Obviously, he didn't want to fail her, so he took to the only outlet for aggression he had left, verbal abuse. She had spent so much time aggravating him that he let out the loudest, goddamn it I've ever heard when she protested her grade, a curved 70. He said, are you really so dumb that you don't realize the gift I'm giving you here? You wrote half a freaking paragraph. You better hope you find yourself a sugar daddy because there's no way a dumb bee like you will find a job. She just straight up walked out of class. None of us said anything, mostly cause we were on his side anyway, partly because we were petrified. Obligatory not a teacher, but my mom is. One year she had a student who was failing because he hadn't turned in any of the work and missed a test or two. The night before her big fetal cat dissection class, after she'd prepped the whole lab and had the fetal cats in the room, he and some friends broke into the school. They plugged the drains in all her sinks and the ones in the floor too then turned them all on. They also unwrapped the fetal cats, ripped them apart, and left them around the room. 
When people started arriving the next day they found the room underneath hers dripping water from the ceiling. Her room had about an inch of water and there were fetal cat parts everywhere apparently. She still had to teach him for the rest of the semester. I forget what the punishment was but it wasn't anything major. They ended up having to rip out the floor and repair it that summer too. I worked in schools from when I was 17 to when I was 23. I left because of the parents. I started out working in inner city schools and then took a better paying job in the suburbs. Holy heck. Upper middle class rich parents are terrible people. And apparently their children can do no wrong. Now I'm a park ranger and life is much better. Man. I hope one day I can tell a story and end it with. Now I'm a park ranger and life is much better. You're living the dream. This was before I was a teacher and worked as a behavior therapist. He had hospitalized two teachers, one was elderly and the other pregnant. He terrorized all of his classmates and they recoiled when he walked in class. He had stabbed his dad in the thigh with a pair of needle nose pliers. He ran from authority, threw rocks, would destroy other students work. He broke my nose the first day I worked with him and just laughed about it. And he was only in kindergarten. I am 6 feet and 200 pounds and have never been afraid of a kid before this little guy. I wasn't afraid for myself. I was scared for the 26 year olds in his class. After a few weeks I had built a decent rapport with the kid and his behaviors had started to fade. His doctor put him on Risperdal, mainly used to treat schizophrenia, and things were really quite smooth for a few months. Then his parents started to mess with his medication and diet. They felt the drugs were doing more harm than good. His mom would ask me at the end of the day did you notice a difference? He wasn't on his meds today, yeah I freaking noticed. He upturned the classroom after I evacuated it. Then he ran out of the class so he could throw rocks at me for 30 minutes until he collapsed from exhaustion to nap in my lap for 15 minutes until he woke up and bit my thigh breaking the skin. For your information, don't frick with your kids meds unless you are a doctor. Withdrawals from some medications could kill your child if they are not weaned off of them. This cycle continued. I would try positive behavior support plan after positive behavior support plan and the parents wouldn't follow through at home. His behaviors would get better than his parents would undermine my work. I started to go home and cry at night when I failed. Then I started drinking more than the one beer I usually have with dinner. I realized that I couldn't work with him anymore at 2am on a Wednesday when I found myself sitting in candlelight in my living room pouring the last drops of a bottle of bourbon that I had started a few hours earlier into my glass. I had failed this kid, his family and his classmates. I applied for a transfer to another kid. TLTR. Crazy. Violent kid. After all of my effort he drove me to drink and I failed him. My dad was a special ed teacher in an elementary school. A lot of the kids had legit mental or physical disabilities. But many of his students were dumped in his class because they came from crappy families and had behavior problems. Those kids would grow up and then have kids of their own. And often they would continue the cycle of crap parenting. He ended up retiring early because he was tired of dealing with a third generation of families repeating the same problems. I've actually heard a similar story from a social worker. Part of the reason he ended up switching careers late in life was this kind of cycle. He had to remove kids from parents who, 20 years earlier, he had removed from their parents. He said he couldn't do a third generation. Not a teacher, but I work with kids. One night four fourth grade girls took a little boy's Gatorade bottle and peed in it. Kid didn't realize it, and drank it. Kid's father called the police. The police came to speak to the four girls and their mothers, and three of the mothers were P. Not at their kids, at us. For not allowing them to come back. They could absolutely not understand why what their daughters had done was wrong. The mother of the fourth girl was a lawyer and helped the officers shut those crazy B up. Not sure what came about after that. There's a kindergarten student at my school who's the future Dexter Morgan. Minus the father's code. Earlier this school year, there was an earthquake drill, in which all the students have to duck underneath their tables and wait for the bell to stop. So while one of the boys in this class was getting underneath the table, he accidentally hits his head and starts crying. What do you think this little girl starts doing? She starts laughing hysterically. The teacher is shocked and asks the girl why she's laughing. In which she replies I'm not laughing because he hit his head. I'm laughing because it hurt him. What the frick. 
and just recently, she punched a disabled girl in a walker in the face. She said the disabled girl was laughing at her, so she thought it was an appropriate response to punch her in the face. And this is only in kindergarten. I can't imagine her being in my 7th 8th grade class as a teen. But with her track record, I doubt she lasts another few years at our school. I was once a teacher for a local guitar class. One student pretty much turned up on the first lesson and demanded to be made into Eric Clapton in 10 minutes flat, which I told him was semi impossible and that if he really wanted to be that good, he'd have to learn and practice like everyone else in the class. I had 15 students in total, so I proceeded to go through the basics of the class. This student was obviously a little annoyed he'd been asked to do something as basic as learning to hold a guitar properly, and so began disrupting the class making snide remarks about how I was treating people like babies. I politely explained that if he didn't learn this, he'd end up not being able to play properly. This seemed to solve the problem and he turned up to the next class only to repeat the same disruptions, comments and general messing about. So eventually I gave him a second final warning that if he didn't start participating then I'd be forced to exit him from the group. The next 6 lessons saw him not practice homework exercises, lose his guitar one week, even breaking several strings on another student's guitar. Eventually I'd had enough and exited him from the group having informed his parents. Some time after his exit, I got a phone call from my boss telling me an official complaint of bullying had been placed against me and that because of this. My class would be suspended until it had been sorted out. So I requested a meeting with the parents and my boss. But I then invited two of my students to attend this meeting and verify my accounts of this pupil's antics. My class was reinstated but the disruption cost me something like 600 Canadian dollars in lost class fees. I've probably missed the karma boat, but frick it. Aspects of this story will seem unbelievable, but I assure you this is true. INB4 didn't happen slash 10. I work for a tutoring agency, which finds after school tutors for people. One of our clients is extremely wealthy, not a household name, but a foreigner whose wealth is into the dollar sign billions. My friend, let's call him Tom, needed a job, so I hooked him up with one teaching this client's 9 year old son, henceforth, Danny, over his school holidays. Danny was a nightmare. The kind of child who has never been told no in his life. A child who lives a life of near unimaginable wealth. Who has an army of staff waiting on him and calling him sir and who he in return treats like dirt. Tom was little more than a butler in Danny's eyes. Which made conducting lessons very difficult. They would have long, drawn out battles over work. Which resulted in little Danny crying and throwing a gigantic tantrum and leaving Tom frustrated but quite powerless. Anyway, one day the family... Tom and some of the house staff had a barbecue in the grounds of the family complex. The father and elder brother, 16, had shot some animals to be cooked. As lunch was wrapping up everybody except the two brothers returned indoors. Tom went in and waited for Danny to rejoin him for a lesson. After a while, Danny came back in very quietly and behaving oddly well. This was so out of the ordinary that Tom asked what the matter was. My snowmobile has caught fire, came his reply. This was rather an understatement. What had happened was the snowmobile had caught fire where it was housed, in the garage of the grandparents' luxurious annex. Danny says that he just turned the ignition and a small fire started in the engine. He ran out of the garage as the fire spread, igniting jerry cans and setting the whole annex on fire. When I say annex, this was a good sized house which Danny's mother had spent years with architects and carpenters designing to precise specifications. The fire brigade was called, and the blaze lasted 9 hours, reducing the building to a scorched shell. It took Danny's parents 3 hours to get over it. That evening they all ate dinner in the main house making pleasant conversation while firefighters were still battling the flames a safe distance away. According to Tom, the family's reaction resembled what anyone else's parents reaction might be after accidentally smashing a plate. TL. DR kid burned his own grandparents house to the ground. I'm not a teacher but when I was in school there was a kid in my class who was horrible and I felt bad for the teachers for having to deal with him. He was a mentally disturbed kid that went off for no real reason and flipped out. Two times spring to mind, though there were others. Once he got to question wrong during a class review for an upcoming test, the teacher would throw a kush ball, SP, 
to a student and that person got a piece of candy if they got the question right. Anyway he got it wrong and refused to let anyone else go until he got one right. After arguing with the teacher for a few minutes he throws his chair at her, then his desk, then someone else's desk. He tries to run out the door and she blocks him, so he goes and jumps out the window. Ground floor. Then she tells him if he's going to jump out the window he can just use the door. He then jumps back in the window and runs through the door. Every time he had one of his fit he's run out of the classroom and go to the guidance counselor's office. The second time that really springs to Min's is when they were doing shots inoculations or whatever. He was afraid of needles and refused to go to the nurse. So the resource officer had to drag him into the nurse's office and hold him down while he got the shot. He peed on himself during the process and it got on the officer. When I pointed it out to the officer I remember he just looked annoyed about it and muttered something about being tired of getting other people's pee on him. I wanted to be a police officer until that day. If you reach the point in your job where someone pee on you only annoys you slightly. That's not the line of work for me. TL. DR. Kid with anger problems throws chairs and desks at the teacher and peed on the resource officer. I think involuntarily pee oneself while being given forced medication is the school's fault, not the person being medicated. Forced medication. Bad. Especially if the meds are administered through a needle. Or worse, anally. Jan she's a really big girl. 6 feet 1 inches easily. Well one day another student, a tiny little kid, half a size a little over 100 lbs, tells her shut your fat butt. So I jump on him immediately. No one does that in my class. Just as I'm telling him to get out and go to the office. Jan leaps up and is screaming frick you you piece of crap now. Jan has a really rough home life. She's upset. I understand. I put my hand on her shoulder and say in my calming teacher voice hey Jan. Sit down I've got this it's okay she immediately rounds on me and says get your freaking hands off me so I had to send her to the office as well. It turns out they have been going at it for a while now. Also like I said Jan has a really rough home life. <laughs> IST year teaching. Not the sharpest knife in the drawer but I have never had a kid this bad since then. Very sticky fingers. Stole stuff of no value to him like cheap used safety goggles. He was the sole reason they put cameras in the cafeteria because he was loading up his backpack with goodies. Just to throw them away. His parents were called in numerous times, but they had some influence in the small town and he was protected. Brought a knife to my class and hid it in his underwear, knowing no one would want to search his nasty shorts. Showed it to people by sticking it out of his fly. When I asked him to leave my class one day, he stood up. Screamed frick you at the top of his lungs. Went over to a corner, pee in it and left. I, and my whole class, was speechless. It will not surprise you that he never did graduate and got kicked out of the military. I am a student teacher, but I have two kids vying for the position of worst I've ever had to deal with. This boy is a percussionist who is incredibly childish. He plays out of turn all the time super loud. Abuses the instruments. Has frequent temper tantrums where he tears up his music or throws things in front of the whole class. And generally whines and cries when he doesn't get his way. He's incredibly defiant and the real, credentialed teacher in the classroom does next to nothing about his behavior. The second child is a girl percussionist who is the first's best friend. She also has temper tantrums, but over super small things. I just asked her to not play while I was talking and then she has to have histrionics, whine, and cry for about 10 minutes before sitting and sulking in the back of the room. She expects special treatment and is incredibly disrespectful to any authority figure. My cooperating teacher also does nothing about her. These kids are in 7th grade. There is no excuse for their behavior. My class would be so much better if they weren't there. I have no idea why they are even in band anymore since it's an elective. Mum's story, not mine. Thankfully I don't have an awful story to tell, yet. My mom is a kindergarten teacher and in the late 1980s she had a particularly difficult student. Violent, yelling, screaming, kicking, hitting, biting. At 5 years old he spent more time out of the classroom than in the classroom. Now, my mom is a last resort teacher. If she sends a student out of a room, there is something seriously wrong. She did more discipline referrals for this student than she has in almost 40 years of teaching combined. She would come home with bruises, etc. 
just from dealing with him. Obviously, this was a student who needed serious help but never received it for a variety of reasons. He left that school after first or second grade and my mom no longer had to deal with him. Fast forward a number of years and there is a report of a middle school student who was arrested for shooting classmates and at a teacher. Guess who? Yet the terror of kindergarten. Best part, the school district released a statement saying that they don't know what went wrong. He had no history of violence or discipline. I wasn't a teacher, but I did work at a summer camp while I was in college. This was located in a very urban area, and I was one of the few white guys who worked there. I also coached basketball, and had the unfortunate benefit of having Malcolm on my team and in my camp. He was 11 at the time, and I'm glad I haven't seen him since. Malcolm had a younger brother who was also on my team, and Malcolm's brother looked up to him. His younger brother was a living, breathing Humpty Dumpty. He was clumsy, awkward and quite pudgy. Malcolm would always slack off in practice, would make jokes while I was walking the team through drills, and even would purposely fall when doing sprints so he would hurt himself. The worst part? His dad coached the other team who practiced at the exact same time as ours. His dad never corrected him once. Camp comes around and I see Malcolm is on my roster. This was one of those typical summer camps where we do a little bit of everything. One day we would focus on sports, the next would be arts and crafts and so on. Malcolm was mouthing off to one of the other campers and told him to go frick himself. I corrected Malcolm immediately and told him I was going to be telling his parents. Malcolm looked me square in the eye and said you're not allowed to be mean to me because you're white. The worst, however, was when we went to the pool one day. I'm sure you can imagine the heck on earth that is when you take over 200 kids to the pool at once. Multiple camps went on the same day. We were severely understaffed, with about 20 campers per staff member. I tried to keep my eyes on everyone, especially Malcolm since he was a troublemaker. Malcolm's brother, Humpty Dumpty, went down on the slides and into the water. It wasn't particularly deep, maybe 4 feet at most. As Humpty Dumpty enters the water, Malcolm braces himself and almost catches his brother. He then held him underwater and wouldn't let his brother come up for air. I jumped in the water to rescue Humpty Dumpty and get Malcolm out immediately. We saved the boy, but he was clearly shaken. I removed Malcolm from the pool and kept him by my side for the rest of the afternoon. I informed our director who relayed the information to the boy's mother. Malcolm was back in camp the next day. I asked him what his mom said about his actions. He told me he wasn't allowed to play his Game Boy for the next week. That was it. For attempting to drown his brother, his only punishment was that he lost his Game Boy. My first teaching gig was at a high school. I replaced a beloved math teacher who had died. The kids were extremely hostile. It wasn't my fault the guy had a heart attack, but it was like they blamed me. I soldiered on. I figured that sooner or later they would get over their grief and it would be okay. I had one girl who was loud, obnoxious, lazy, and refused to shut up long enough to learn anything. She was constantly grooming herself in class, which was a joke. She was horribly ugly. She was always confrontational with me. One day she was mad at me because she didn't get it. Another day she was mad because I spent too much time helping another student. The next she was mad because she thought one of the white girls had a crush on me. WTF. I wrote that girl up a dozen times. I never could get her parent, S, to come in for a conference. And nothing I did changed her attitude. Every single day she disrupted class and cussed at me. She did her best to rope a bunch of the other girls into a little gang to hassle me. Anyway, I only get a truly irredeemable kid maybe every other year. And she was it. I hated that kid. Thankfully most of the rest of them came around and made it worthwhile to show up for work. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.